So it seems that my last uh, screen tone tutorial was either too long, too complicated, or it just didn't make sense. But if you're interested in that longer one, I'll leave a link below. But today we're going to do quick and short. As you can see, the video timeline is under 10 minutes of how to do screen tone, just one method. And if you guys are more interested in different methods, request it in the comments below. But yes, welcome back, gentle folks. This is Citria, C-E-T-R-I-Y-A. And we're going to keep it simple, like I said, and get straight to the point. So making manga screen tones for your comic or in general in Photoshop. So right here, I have uh, one of my older illustrations. And so far, the ink work looks pretty good. Just a quick note um, that in general, if you're going to do black and white comics, that you should go ahead and add little specks of black uh, black uh, fill or uh, thicker lines versus thinner lines and all that jazz, as you can see right here. So by all means, do that. Now, because it's an old image, I didn't start it out that way. But in case you scan anything, usually it comes out as RGB or even CMYK color be sure that so step one basically be sure to go into mode and then grayscale everything all right so now we have our line art um, in grayscale and we're going to go ahead and make tones so you have your document it's in grayscale what I want you to do so this is step number two go ahead and open a new file create a new file um, make it at least letter size, you know, eight and a half inches wide or 11 um, inches high. Or I think the international um, measurements is size A4, uh, but basically the size of a letter page or, you know, mailing page. Um, in Photoshop, it'll ask you to choose color mode right here, as you can see on the right. Make sure that's on grayscale also. Let's say you accidentally opened this file in color. That's okay. Just go ahead, do exactly as you've done before. Go to image mode and then select grayscale, okay? So, step number three, pick a shade of gray. You can pick any shade of gray, um, any one that you like. We're just gonna fill the canvas out. So I'm gonna go for, we're gonna go for a light gray and then a medium gray, right? Then um, afterwards, you can use your fill bucket fill your whole document in the gray so now you have it filled out in gray and maybe it's not the best contrast so for you guys I'm gonna just darken it a bit but I can see the difference but for you guys I'm gonna darken it just a little bit now hopefully you can see a difference so there you go you have a whole new document that's just in solid gray now this is the part that makes it very simple and I think people got confused because I was all over the place but really this is all you have to do the same way you change it to grayscale, you go image, mode, okay, bitmap. And that's pretty much it. So listen up, listen up. This screen will pop up. It's asking you how you want to set your uh, bitmap or how you want your tones to end up looking like. So the, for the first part, it says input and output. Input is basically the size of your documentation and it should be high resolution. So minimum 300 pixel, pixels. Um, you can go higher if you like. Output is where you can change it. Um, output needs to be a minimum of 300. That's just the way it is. And the output should match with the output or the size of your files for when you're printing. If you're doing this for like a webtoon or whatever, um, just keep it at 300 and then you could size down your document into a JPEG afterwards. But I would definitely suggest 300. And pixels per inch, always. I say always pixels per inch. I've never used pixel by centimeter. So sorry, international folks. I just do pixels per inch. The look end up being the same. And then it says, how do you want the pixelation to look like or method use? Um, sometimes it defaults threshold. You don't want that pattern dither. It looks sandy, diffusion, all that stuff. But look right here. It says half tone screen. Get it? So screen tone, half tone screen. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Say OK. The next window that comes up is frequency, um, angle, shape. It's basically how you want it to visually look like once it turns it into a screen tone. So I don't know if you've ever seen in manga screen tones before. Some dots look bigger than others. Um, 
some of them are funny shapes and all that jazz but for today we're just doing basic screen tone so whatever the frequency always keep it at 42 that's what I always leave it as oh leave it as um, when you're starting out and then the angle always at 45 okay and then afterwards these are the different shapes if you want to experiment you may but if you want to do traditional screen tones round and then make sure that this is line per inch the same way it was pixels per inch lines per inch uh, so as you can see for frequency at 42 angle at 45 say okay <clears throat> now you probably seen like it, the textures but I'm zooming in and now you can see that the gray actually turned into black and white and there you go screen tone afterwards you could always save this file so you could always reuse it image mode grayscale forgot to do that image mode bitmap 300 pixels per inch 300 output pixels per inch half tone method half tone screen now here's the change that you may want to do but don't have to do listen carefully when you look at your manga the older manga the pixels are a lower frequency let me repeat that in older manga the frequency is lower and the reason for that is because printers were just not capable of printing such small small dots now with newer manga you might notice that the gray looks very smooth in comparison to like 1990s shoujo or shonen manga right there's less texture it looks smooth to get that smoother tone look you just up the frequency so now i'm making the frequency being 60 lines per inch the angle stays 45 don't ever change the angle always keep the angle at 45 the shape will always be round and you say okay this one visually doesn't look like it changed that much because we have even more of the pixels tighter compact. Now, what you do to add your tone into your documents. I just go ahead and just copy the whole thing. Or you could drag and drop, but let's do a copy. So select all, edit, copy. Okay, and then now you have the line art that you are working on edit paste simple as that and then right here on the layers tools you can set that to multiply or you can set your line art to multiply usually I set my line art to multiply because um, I tend to draw on top of my artwork okay now this step is an advanced step but it's simple to do are you ready are you listening good on your layers palette on your layers menu right here I'm gonna drag it out so you can really see it this guy right here this guy right here at the very bottom there's different options in different programs it might show up differently but here is what you need and it's called layer mask if I can actually get it to show real clearly it says layer mask select your screen tone layer so i have it right here and maybe you might want to rename it so it's easy for you like gray but here you have your tone layer selected and then on the bottom right here it says add layer mask and boom you see this little extra box here now make sure that little extra box is selected see now right now i have the actual art part of the layer selected but I actually want that little white box selected right that little white box basically will control whether you see the tone or you don't see the tone kind of like masking fluid but the difference is the reason why I really suggest you do this method is that if you make a mistake with the eraser tool you're not having to copy paste or fill in the parts that you made a mistake because technically all you're doing is hiding parts of the screen tone and usually to start I like to go ahead and completely uh, and just completely hide out the layer there you go so now you can see right here that it's turned to black that means nothing is seen right so I'm gonna go put this layer thing back in there so now nice and simple 
You could use your brush, a hard edge brush. You could use a lasso tool. You could do anything. But if you look at your color palette, where you want the tone to show up, you need to paint back in with white. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick lasso and fill tool here so you can see really quickly. And there you go. And let's say I want to erase or add a highlight. All I have to do is paint back in with the white. I'm gonna come in, zoom in a little closer for you guys. There you go. Come in with the white. But if you look right here, again, over at the layers panel, you will see that there's like specks of white showing up because that's where I want the tone to show up. So again, on your layer mask, all you do is select the layer that you wanna add a mask, click add layer mask. This will pop up, usually in white, fill it with black, and then go ahead and paint back out. So you paint it back in using white because white means you want it to show through. There you go, nice and simple. So hopefully this tutorial was a help of you and hopefully this was nice and quick and simple. And over time, I think this is a good starting method. If you want more advanced techniques for screen toning, I just, well, I guess vote on it down below. Other than that, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope um, this was simple for you. If you want a longer video, just go ahead and click on the link below. Other than that, if you want to support me other than commenting and liking this video so that way I could keep on posting, feel free to visit some of my shops down below or check out my Skillshare class, which does not have anything to do with comics. It's specific to my day job as working as a um, illustrator for like products that sells in stores. So anyhow, all the best you guys and hopefully this year will be an awesome and productive year to you all. All the best and see you in the next video.